Welcome to Just Paint It. I'm Christina Watts, your host, and today we're going to paint Moore's Meadow. So we have a beautiful park out here. It's a sunny fall day, and uh, we may get a few furry companions in the image, but um, that is the fun of being out in the great outdoors doing plain air painting. So today, what we have with us is another MDF artist panel to paint on. This is nice and light and easy to take when you're going on scene. And then, of course, just my easel and a few paints. Um, I'm going to actually start by applying my paints right onto my canvas today and then mushing them around so that uh, you can see that I don't use uh, a palette as, as much. And that is extra helpful again when you're painting in the great outdoors and you don't have all the gear that you might have when you're at home. So we start with our titanium white and I am literally going to take my palette knife here and we're going to kind of come in and run some sky in. So when you're doing this, it's good to just be free and just get the paint right on the canvas. Um, we do have some sunshine out again today, so this may dry relatively quickly and it's important to move fast. Another trick of the trade is to uh, use larger brushes or palette knives or tools so that you can get in and get the job done as quickly as possible. I don't know about all of you, but this is definitely one of my favorite Prince George parks because I have a dog and we love running through here. Now that I have a good amount of white on here, I'm going to go ahead and grab some tubes of blue. Now we know that uh, we need different variations of color in the sky and so that is why I will typically add a few more different colors. So I'll just drop this down and I've got a few paints loaded right in my pocket. Another one that I enjoy is Titanium Buff. So that is a off-white beige color. And again, it just adds to the different spectrum going onto your canvas. So I'll go ahead and put some here, here, and we can do a few streaks down here. Now I know a lot of people wonder like, how do you start these landscapes? Um, well, the first thing to do is to put some paint on the canvas so you have it to push around. And then once we get a background in, then we can start forming tree lines and the trails, the grasses, and some of the uh, trees and leaves. So a very good technical term, mushing. So the beauty of a palette knife is for those of you who really kind of get caught up in just using a brush, is that if you have any handshake or if you're really just looking for impressionistic looking art, you're gonna get it with this tool. This is one of my absolute favorite ways to paint. It's quick, it's fast, and it spreads a paint around really nice. Now eventually I'll get in and I will use a little bit of a brush to maybe soften some of these edges out where I want some clouds. I just want to make sure that I get in and I'm covering up my panel. So give it a wiggle, jump over and move around. Now when I'm looking at sky formations today, we can see that our clouds are kind of drifting over this way and I've come up with some verticals here in the sky, but I will adjust that in a second. It's always good to get into your scene, take, you know, the, the ambiance of it and just make it your own. Take a few artistic licenses. This is looking good. We got some good blues in here. Try not to over blend. Over blending can just lead to one big flat color on your surface. Just leave some of the areas where you need that dark and some where you leave it light. Now, of course, we're working in acrylics today. So another thing to think about is that they dry darker. And um, so if you think you have it too light, you want to make you just know that in 24 hours, this is going to set in and, and look a little darker. And it can also come down to the type of paint that you're using. Typically, the more professional grade paints um, have more pigment loads, and so they stay, they stay truer to the color. 
Um, and then the cheaper paints will have fillers in them and so they will definitely go darker than the professional grades and you might find that they look flat like a, a matte surface when they're done drying. So just good things to know. All of them, of course, do a good job depending on what you're doing. Okay, we've really taken away a lot of the white, so obviously now I have to put some of that back in. I'm not going to wipe my palette knife on my apron or my paper towel. I have a lot of canvas I need to still fill up, and so I'm just gonna wipe it on a blank area here and clean it up so that I'm not too worried about putting it back in my jar and stealing a little more white out of it. Okay, now this is the time where I start thinking about my clouds, um, some of my tree line. I'm gonna have more of this about the meadow. So I want, you know, just a small bit of clouds up here and the trees are gonna go in over top of this. Now it's good to have some down blue uh, before you put the trees in, just so that you can leave gaps between the branches to see the sky. So I wanted to for sure cover that area. All right, grabbing a little bit of white out of my bucket here, and uh, I'm gonna come in, just check a few clouds out. I know some of them have got some gray on the bottom today too. I may touch a little bit of that in, but let's see how this looks first. Now I'm gonna put these rather high, because like I said, we've got, we've got some trees going in. And as you can see, because I have the blue on there, you just wanna really get in and get out and then wipe wipe it away on your canvas. Otherwise, you are doing nothing but pushing around and making blue mud. Okay, another trick with palette knife is just lightly touch the canvas. So what it can come down to is how heavy a hand you use with your palette knife. I recommend just using a soft light touch, just enough to hit the canvas and drift that paint around. And tapping, I love tapping too. And those of you who've been to any of my classes, you'll know that I will tell you tap, tap, tap a lot. Okay, this is looking pretty good. I can see I still want a little bit whiter here. Rub that off on my canvas board. And then grab a little bit more white. And we'll come in and go over the top here. Okay, so that's all I'm gonna do for now. I may come back into this later after it's dried a little bit more and apply some more clouds, maybe some of the gray that we see underneath the clouds. But for now, I'm gonna leave those colors to sit and rest for a bit. So we're going to go ahead and move into some of the meadow now. And um, what I like to do down here is to start kind of drawing my lines out where my tree line is gonna go and where the meadow trail is going to go. And then I start, once I have those lines in, I start filling them in. So we're gonna put our white down and we're gonna jump into a brush now so we can draw the lines in with that and then continue on. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a raw sienna for this, just because it's a light color and um, it's a neutral color and if I, I know from the colors I'm using today, the blues, the greens, the yellows, and a little bit of red, um, this color won't muddy with all of those. So that is why I'm choosing it for my line work today. Hey, okay, I'll put my knife down and we'll pull out some brushes. Okay, as you can see here, I haven't used a palette plate again. I've just gone straight into a tube and uh, we're going to start saying, okay, we, we don't want a horizon line that comes directly in the middle of a canvas because it ends up looking just a little bit uh, off. We want to bring that up. So if you're in photography, videography, um, 
or painting, of course, you will want to kind of follow some of the rule of thirds. We can afford to come up a little bit further for the horizon line. Not quite in the middle, but right up here because I know also the trees are gonna go on top of that. So that's gonna raise it up. I'm gonna go put that line right in here. So that is my flat horizon line that will give me some starting points. Second to that now are my trees. And I'm gonna make, because the trees to my right are closer to me, so they're gonna be bigger. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this side bigger than that side. And again, as you see, these are just really tiny impressions of uh, paint going in. And then the other side, I will want it to be lower than this one here. So we're gonna come in right about here. And we will adjust this, of course, to go up a bit more, but this is a good line to kind of go by. There, and this guy up here. And if you really want to check, you can use your brush and just put it up here and go, did I get this, up, you know, about right? Well, this is definitely higher than that side. I can tell because I've used my thumb. And you can also actually go ahead and take a look in the field and uh, if you get a horizon line mark, you can jump it over and see approximately where. Uh, this takes a little bit of getting used to. Just approximate is fine for our plain air paintings. Okay, so the other thing that I want to capture in here is we have this tree heights. Uh, we do have the trail that comes through and we're over to the right hand side. We're gonna put the trail coming in, not dead center, again, we don't do anything perfectly centered, make it organic, have it a little off kilter. We like it just different in art. So we're gonna put it right about there and then we're gonna run it off here. So I would not take this trail to a corner. Again, it's just works better aesthetically if you don't drive it into the corner. Just want it a little bit off there. Okay. It's looking pretty good. Just gonna make some little adjustments here because I know if the trail's here, we can see that the meadow cut in over there as well with the tree lines. So we'll just run that. Okay, so as we know with trails, when they get closer to us, they get wider. Everything that is closer gets bigger. And then it goes off into the distance into nothing. So those are gonna give us our lines, nice, soft, rich, color that will not muddy with the next few colors that I will be putting on here. So I'll tube this one up and I'm going to keep it out because this is fall and I do see some of these nice sienna colors in the, into the, in the leaves so I'm going to keep it out. Uh, the next thing I'll do is put a base down for green in the field and I have a pre-mixed one here. This one is a chromium green oxide but just like the sky you want a few different greens so I will put this down and I will also put down a phthalo green and like a darker green so just choose two or three different colored greens ranging from like lighter to dark and uh, you can also throw some white in there too if you want to make it lighter as you can see my canvas has a little bit of white and it has a little bit of green in here so that is some chromium green. Now I'm throwing down a darker green, a Jenkins green. And I like throwing the darker greens kind of right where this tree line is here, maybe along that edge, and then throughout here. We will start working light on the dark later. Let's get that in and our phthalo green blue shade. So we used a phthalo blue in the sky and we're using a phthalo green in the uh, grass. They're just brighter colors generally so if you see the phthalos just know that they're bright. And this phthalo actually is a blue shade of the green, so this will be nice with our sky. All right, 
painting is doing wonderfully as you can see uh, I'm not stressed about this. I know it goes from this to something fabulous. So just know that when you're just going freehand and throwing paint on your canvas, it will work out. And I'm going to go ahead and wipe off my brush here because it had a whole lot of that paint on it just to scrub it off because again, we're out painting in the, the great outdoors. And I'm going to jump back to my palette knife so the thing with the uh, landscapes now is, you know, as with the sky, we're moving with the formation and then with the ground, we also need to move with uh, the formation. And in this case, it's going to be sort of up, right? So I'm going in and I'm saying, okay, grass grows up. So I am going to go and use my palette knife in that motion and that it's kind of like carving out a painting. So think about where, where it needs to go. Not too worried about my tree line right now. I just want to get in and get some of some of the work to my uh, some of the work to the land in here. Now nature's funny because even though I'm using you know three shades of green or two shades of blue, if we look around, there are multiple shades of green. Like we couldn't even make the amount of paint that it would take that would be perfect for every single one of those. I'm being careful to leave that line in so I can see it for my, tra my trail. It's because we're gonna use those. And um, if I need more green, which is looking like I'm going to, I'm gonna pull down on that one. I'm gonna go ahead and just throw again on the canvas. So move, move fast and uh, just have a good time painting these landscapes. They're a lot of fun and they're enjoyable to paint and it gets you in the great outdoors and who can't help but be inspired when you're right there in the scene and in the moment. Looks like I need some more green. And I really love the dark green, so I'm going to put some more of that on as well. We'll go dark before we go light. That way we'll have contrast. Now another way you can use a dark color is to vignette your painting. So using it on the outskirts to draw your eyes into where it's bright is a really um, interesting way to paint as well. I'm surprised we haven't seen more of our furry little friends out. We had some guys here earlier. They were lovely. Notice um, as I'm using my palette knife, I'm skipping and jumping. I'm not doing one big swoop up. That uh, just helps me break up those colors. And I'm kind of liking leaving some of these gaps in here because I'm gonna have to put them back in anyways. So it's important to uh, just leave a little bit of those showing if you'd like. Okay, we got some green in. Another thing that um, I would like to put in is a bit of yellow. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this yellow here. And it is a, um, it's actually a fluid acrylic. It's a nickel azo yellow. And I'm just gonna get it in here in a few spots because it's fall. And because our grass is changing, and because it's a really interesting color. So, this is definitely going to be darker than what we're seeing out here because um, we need contrast for a painting, for one. And uh, we're doing a quick plain air today.
I love this color and it's gonna look really nice in our trees as well. Now I'm just filling in a few of these gaps here where I see the panel, but if I see paint, I'll skip over that. Okay, so this is good enough for the base layer of the land. And now I'm gonna start working on the trees. And again, I'm gonna go dark before I go light. We also have really beautiful birch trees and poplar trees in here. So we're gonna be thinking about how we're gonna put the white in later for those, um, which is really gonna make this painting pop. It's my favorite part. Um, so let's go ahead and run the tree line in. In the background, I can see the sun is hitting some of the tops of the trees in certain areas and that's catching that light. So we can do a little bit of light on top, go into some darks and then uh, again, more light. So we're looking at layers and we're looking at light, dark, light, um, and then some darks right where the tree trunks will be simply because of once we put the white on there, they will look really great. Hi, how are you? Good, <laughs> nice day. Yeah, a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna go in with the same colors we used down below. Plus I'm gonna grab a white. And we're going to hit it right here. So that with my white will give me some nice toppers over there. And then we've got some light over here. Dark, I'm gonna throw the dark in. Underneath and right about there too. I really wanna go dark in this area. I want that to be different than the meadow here when we start putting in some contrasts. Okay. Some white. Now, I don't want to dip this right into my white because I will destroy it. So, again, I'm going to use the canvas, come around any of these sides, just give a good scrape. And now I will probably wipe it off on my, my apron. Okay. Okay, whites with the greens here, and whites up here. Just leave that globbed in there. And I'm gonna pull out the yellow, that liquid paint I was using. Throw it right on my palette knife again. So we're gonna put that up here. Just touch them in. You're gonna mu you're gonna mush them around in a bit. So just get them on there. A little there, here, and in there. And that raw sienna, we're gonna put that in too. So. All of these colors mixed together, the previous blues that are down there, these are all gonna make for beautiful, beautiful greens and uh, just a variety of color that is gonna really add to your painting. And our raw sienna. Now I did bring a bit of red with me and uh, some other oranges, but I'm gonna wait until I get this down first before I put those little pops in. All right, so again, we wanna come in, remember, we wanna tap this time and circulate your palette knife. So give it a spin, give it a little wiggle and try to come up this way through tree lines, so, and down below.
Now, if you're here and you're trying to mush in that little area here that keeps jumping, go ahead and give it a swipe, but then come back up in a sec. And that should run it in okay. Circular motion, leave some gaps. See how I'm using my knife now? Now I've got some trees coming in and we have gaps behind this so we can see the beautiful sky that we've put in. Okay, so leave that, tap, tap, tap here, that's over there. And if you put a little too much sienna in, just mush it in. Using technical terms today, a lot of mushing, a lot of palette knife work. Actually, we've 100, almost 100% palette knife painted this, minus the lines that we put in. Okay, get those in. Gain circular motions. See how when you come down with circular motions, it leaves bush lines. And then on this side. So I've lost a lot of my dark over here. I need to put that in. Going ahead and adding it in. And a little bit of back here. We're gonna say that this is the light side and that over there is more dark. Okay, there. Lots of paint on this canvas. It is gonna take some time to dry but I love thick, thick paint. And I know a lot of people that buy art or are collectors, they love the feel and the texture of thick paint too. Okay, now I'm just adjusting my hand because I want some little bits of tops to this side. And I'm also tapping some of the color down. So, so I just, reach my body around to throw that in there. And we're doing pretty good so far. We uh, just want to do this painting in roughly half an hour and at uh, good speed so that we can catch all this. Okay, so good height over here. And now for our pops of color and some more definition and then we will be able to call this one done as far as a plain air goes. So let's do that quickly. This time I'm pulling out purple. Purple's a shadow color. And then we're going to just add it a little bit in here onto this side where we need a little bit of depth. Tiny bit over here. Put the caps back on. And I have a little bit of red. Now this is going to mush into the green. Green and red make mud, so just be very careful with it. I just, I really wanted just a little bit of color in here. And maybe a little bit on this side. When I, when I move it around, it's not gonna be that obvious. This is a quinacridone red, by the way. So if you like that color, that's what it is. And a cadmium orange. So it's fall, we're seeing nice, touches of orange again we, you know we mush the orange in to this and it will uh, not be so obvious and I like that I'm gonna throw some down here too I was pretty careful with my tubes today so they're not a mess on the lid okay let's uh, squish this in so we've got the purple there purple and yellow are opposite colors so on top of it being a shadow color when you put it beside a yellow because it's the opposite it will help it pop and as i have it on my palette knife i'm going to move it around my canvas so anytime you put a color somewhere you can't just have it in one spot you should have it in more spots so that's what i am doing here and we're gonna run a little bit up there okay orange I'm gonna touch some orange around here moving relatively quick as you can see I had the purple still on my 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 brush here my brush my palette knife 
And we'll just touch that in there. And then some red. And a little bit more orange down here. Don't worry about these. This looks really bright right now, but I guarantee you when this dries, these colors are going to dull because I've used them in the other ones. Okay, that's good there. Get it back to light and then I will put my tree lines in. Okay, a little bit of yellow here. I'm just doing this to tone some of that orange here. And put that color there too. It's amazing how much paint has gone on this canvas and you could continue doing this for a long time, but we need to get out of here before she starts to rain. Okay, let's run that again. Some down here. Remember, sweep up in the field. Okay, let's finish this off with a little bit of grass and our trees, trunks. wipe your palette knife off. I will just pitch this one now because I don't need it for anything more. Lay it down. Grab my white out because we need those lines and I'm using a smaller palette knife now. I'm running it on the edge so dipping it in. I'm really just trying to make sure that both my edges are covered because now what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw in some lines through here. Now remember you need to make them different heights, different widths. And then just scrape it around. So I am just going to use also the white through here as some of my grass. And I will bounce this right into the the green a bit more here. It's getting nice and muddied so I can adjust this. Nice little grasses in there. Sometimes it gets too much and you might want to fix that up later. But now we have to go in and scrape. So scrape, scrape, scrape. Now I'm using the tip of the palette knife for this. And try to remember too that, you know, you don't want them the same height, you don't want them the same width. And as they go away in the distance, they become smaller. And as you can see, you can just scrape back to the blue. It will give you some impressions of some over there as well. So now I am gonna have to get some cleaner white on my brush my palette knife. We call these brushes in art. We don't often refer to them as palette knives. Everything is a brush. Um, when you're drawing, even your pencil sometimes is referred to as your brush. Okay, more white. I'm get that clean off. The other side has some trees. Almost had bloopers there. There we go. We'll leave that for our white. Crawl back into some sienna. Touch it up on the tops. And 
Now I'm just mushing some of the tops of these lines so that they uh, look a little bit better here. Um, I have lost some of the dark over here. So these are things I would pick away at. Definitely, if I, when I take this home and I continue working on it. But for the most part, what we want is just to uh, make sure we've got all the lines in so that we can carry on when we bring this home. Now, what happened to our trail? We started to disappear. We're putting it back in. Remember, it goes out and then it comes back in and it gets bigger. So on that trail in, you don't want it to be a perfect line because uh, the grass has come up and worked its way around it. You definitely want that trail to show. So what I do is I just come in and I wiggle some of that color back in with some of the green and it trails off into the distance as a nothing left up top there. And there we go. Okay, I'm just gonna do one quick more thing. I keep saying that, but I swear painting is never done sometimes. And that is with some dark green. Because I said I lost some of the darks over here. So I just want to throw some back in. Those. And titanium buff. So we see uh, also the grass line coming in from the side. I just want to capture some of that. Now the titanium buff is your off-white, so that won't be so obvious in a, uh, so this will be our little fluffy grasses and stuff that kind of come off over here. And we'll put a little bit on this side too. That's the sting nettle that we see. And then as it trails off into the distance, and comes closer into here. Got our wind blowing the wrong way today. On this last tiny little bit. Now remember our dark that we put in over here. And let's scrape that some of that down. Now we don't want all these tree lines to be perfectly in line, so I'm just changing those. Skimming the surface here and there. Pop some of that color down, move it around. Okay, I'm gonna stand back for a quick sec, take a look, see any major adjustments before I take this home where I might continue to work on it some more there. I think that's good for now. We're going to call it uh, call it done as far as we're going to finish out here in the great outdoors. And let's go ahead and sign our piece. Right, and you have yourself an artful day. Thanks for watching.